Good evening. Birmingham's to be the pilot city for a new regeneration project which aims to revitalise the area's stuttering economy. New jobs, new business and new growth are the aim in a city which has some of the country's worst unemployment and deprivation. Business leaders here asked to be chosen for the pilot, which is the brainchild of former Deputy Prime Minister Lord Heseltine. They'll be able to bid for up to £7 billion of funding and then decide how to spend it to promote economic growth. BBC WM's political reporter Elizabeth Glinker has the details. Having set out his ideas on urban renewal in Birmingham two months ago, today the flowing, if greying, locks of the man once dubbed Tarzan were back in town to unveil the second city as the government-backed pilot area for his plan. If you were looking for a place to try out the ideas, where better than Birmingham? It's got great institutions, it's got powerful leaders, it's got big industries. So it's got everything you would want as an experimental area. There's no extra money, but there is more power. Power to decide how up to £7 billion of national funding could be spent across the Greater Birmingham area. Lord Heseltine wants to shift power away from London towards England's other cities. The redesign of Birmingham's New Street Station was debated for decades, but it's hoped that with more local decision-making that big projects like this one will be able to avoid red tape and get off the ground more quickly. In a city where the council faces a self-proclaimed funding crisis, the man who will lead the new project says it's a huge opportunity. Well, the, the physical thing that we're going to see is that more power and money will actually be av available locally to spend on the things that we think are really going to generate the economic growth and jobs that we, we need so much. In the future, Lord Heseltine's plans could go much further, including the creation of a cabinet minister for Birmingham, the scrapping of district councils and an official role for chambers of commerce. In the meantime, the former deputy prime minister hopes he's launching a quiet revolution. The one thing one mustn't do is to overstate this as some great new initiative that's going to dramatically change tomorrow. But what it could do is to give us a very big com competitive thrust in building on the strengths of local areas rather than waiting for civil servants in London to tell them how they should behave. The Birmingham experiment will now be watched closely by England's other cities. Elizabeth Glinker, BBC Midlands Today. Well, with us now is Andy Street, who's the Managing Director of John Lewis, also Chair of the Greater Birmingham and Solihull Local Enterprise Partnership. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you. Um, this sounds very promising. Will it create new business, new jobs? We hope so. We can't be certain yet, but what we can be certain of today is that many other cities might have wanted to be pilot, but we saw the opportunity, saw the import of this, and said we want to get in there and make sure the Prime Minister gave us the opportunity to prove just what we can do. Well, you're getting £7 billion, or up to £7 billion, so surely you've got to be creating new business and new jobs. We're not getting a single penny yet, and I hope that doesn't sound negative. All we've got today is the opportunity to bid for that after this piece of work is completed in three months' time. So I just want to manage expectations there. Well, all right, so, so what tack are you going to go on then? What we're going to go on is the basis that um, if we were to control that funding, rather than it be controlled by Whitehall departments, the businesses locally, politicians locally, are much more likely to know what's for the good of the region. And if we look at the sort of images behind Elizabeth's report, they're of New Street Station redevelopment. That's been about public sector and private sector working together. We think we can have more things like that. And it's quite unusual, quite strange, quite uh, radical, really, to have unelected people um, making those sort of decisions, isn't it? Well, let's be clear. The elected leaders of the nine local authorities that make up the LEP, they are all part of this. So that's where the democratic piece comes. And they're actually saying, let's work with businesses, because they recognise that businesses do have a different thing to contribute. OK, well, if, if you were sitting in that same chair a year from now, what would you count as being successful? Uh, that we have got agreement from the Prime Minister and the Chancellor to actually uh, devolve some of the powers and the money that will enable us to uh, take control of our economic destiny. So we're looking 
for an agreement from government. So it's still got to look quite a long way down the line before anything really happens. It's got a long way, yes, but in the meantime, the LEP continues to work on the things that have already been agreed, for example, the Enterprise Zone, for example, the apprenticeships, 3,000 more apprenticeships that were agreed through the city deal. So we've got lots of other things that are already happening, but yes, this, this is going to take a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it's the jobs, that's what we're really concerned about. So yeah. many people watching tonight are worried about jobs. Will this create jobs? It will. The LEP is already beginning to create jobs with its partners, and the best example of that would be the apprenticeships that we've um, secured already. It would be the work that we're doing on the Life Sciences Park in Edgbaston, where we've got agreement to the funding. That definitely will create jobs, and in time, this work with Lord Heseltine will also create jobs. Andy Street, thank you. Thank you. Well, it seems that the boost to the region's economy we've just been hearing about can't come soon enough. A new report from Birmingham's Chamber of Commerce today shows a dip in the fortunes of manufacturing in the region. In the last quarter, there was a slump in the number of firms reporting increased orders, sales and exports. There was better news, though, for service industries, as our business correspondent Peter Plisner reports. Busy and getting busier, this Birmingham firm which makes machine tools is bucking the Midlands trend with order books continuing to rise and at a rapid pace. This one's on commissioning and will ship uh, to Santa Cruz uh, at the end of next week. But bosses here say it's only happening because of growth abroad. Europe is flat, the UK follows it and um, it's the developing markets around the world, developing manufacturing markets that are busy. But it's not the same picture everywhere. Many Midlands manufacturers say the trading environment has got much tougher and has slowed significantly. And confidence in 2013 is down. And that's not good for growth or job creation. The latest survey from the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce shows order books declining, with the number of companies reporting increased UK sales down from 37 to 33 per cent, and growth in exports falling from 45 to 37 per cent. The region's service sector fared better thanks to events like last year's Conservative Party conference, which boosted bookings for many businesses. We're becoming really quite a, a city now for international national conferences, party conferences. So although manufacturing is wobbling a bit, uh, the service sector doing much better than we might have hoped for. Elsewhere in the region, prospects for 2013 are better. This is the Jaguar Land Rover engine plant taking shape at the I-54 site near Wolverhampton. Many Midlands manufacturers will benefit from increased work once it's up and running. This is vitally important to Staffordshire and the Black Country and Birmingham. This is UK important, regionally important and important for the Staffordshire and Wolverhampton councils. Everyone's hoping for a better 2013, but the reality is the recession and the continuing crisis in Europe won't make things easy. Well, Peter's with us now in the studio. Peter, not such good news today then on the manufacturing front, but better news on the investment front. Yes, the West Midlands seems to have emerged as the second most popular place to invest in the UK in 2013, only outstripped by London. The study by Ernst & Young seemed to suggest that uh, decision makers like the fact that automotive and uh, energy companies are keen on the region, but they do say that the West Midlands should be branded and heavily branded to make it more attractive to foreign investors. And this survey today from the Chamber of Commerce, should we be worried that manufacturers' order books aren't as full and as, as glowing as they have been? Well, the good news is that it's not the case everywhere. As you saw in the film, uh, BSA Machine Tools, they're exporting those big lathes to places like uh, Mexico and the USA. And overall, the West Midlands is still doing better than other regions because of our close links to the automotive industry. And, uh, of course, that will improve next year when that Jaguar Land Rover engine plant opens up for business. And Lord Heseltine's plan, I have to ask you about this, is it really as positive as everybody believes for well, growth? £7 billion is a lot of money. The good news is we get to spend it, we get to decide what it's spent on. That's something that the government has previously done. As you heard Andy Street say, it's better done by local decision makers and that's good news. And ultimately, as he said, it will create jobs. We've just got to get the £7 billion first, haven't we? Peter, thank you very much. Coming up later in the programme, why